Yo from the list of the inquisitive soul of the most important question facing any race. The whole political, social, and economic sphere of any society is largely determined by answers to this question. Indeed, the fact which we live in the world today between totalism and democracy is born a conflict of question what is man? Whether the part in the will of the Hello sir, you are not you are not quietly audible, sir. You are not quite audible, sir. Please, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I request uh, all of you to please kindly uh, switch off your mic. And there may be connectivity issue, so kindly bear. Thank you. OK, so let us start once again. Good afternoon, one and all. I, your host, Dr. Anirudh Babar, once again welcome you all to this yet another session of Dot Talks webinar series organized by Setso College. What is man that thou art mindful of him? This question flowing from the lips of the inquisitive soul is one of the most important questions facing any generation. The whole political, social, and economic structure of any society is largely determined by its answers to this pressing question. Indeed, the conflict which we witness in the world today between the totalitarianism and democracy is at bottom a conflict over the question, what is man? Whether man is a cog in the will of the state, or whether he is a free creative being capable of facing responsibility. In our generation, the asking of this question has grown to extensive proportions. But though there is widespread agreement in asking the question, there is fantastic disagreement in answering it. A few modern thinkers would probably agree with the writer of yesterday who spoke of man as the supreme clown of creation. Others would probably share the materialistic thinking of the recent writer who described man as a chemical laboratory driven by sex impulse. Others would probably join in with the optimism of Shakespeare's Hamlet. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. Still, others would agree with Thomas Carlyle in saying, there are depths in man that go to the lowest hell and heights that reach the highest heaven, for are not both heaven and hell made out of him, everlasting miracles and mystery and mystery that he is. So the question, what is man, has been haunting me since years and must have been haunting you as well. So today we have a very fantastic person with us, that is Mr. U.S. Pandey. Mr. Pandey is going to elaborate and explore this question with his knowledge and wisdom of years. Mr. Pandey is a graduate in engineering from University Roorkee, which is now known as IIT Roorkee, joined Indian Railway Service of Engineers and retired from the position of Additional Director General. Life member of Theosophical Society, its international speaker, and also president of Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand Federation of the Society. Theosophical Society is a worldwide organization founded in the year 1875 and works for spiritual and social reforms. First object of the society is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood without distinction of race, caste, color, creed, and sex. Mr. Pandey delivers talks on theosophical themes in various forums, including colleges and universities within and outside the country. He has been a member of uh, Board of Transparency, International India, 
he is associated with some of the social activities also so mr pandey will be covering this talk as to man's identity as of describe and understand different societies and religious cultures of his etc and about all him says so the description importance of the question who am i and so far to get by negation or trash made or expansion met double apple nature self was three more than for mortal man the inner immortal for its attributes man his position and role in the whole universe and even benefit of knowledge to the society man has become human 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 and superhuman or perfect man core character in progress in humanity all this is going to be a very exciting talk this is going to be a very uh, thought session my friends please pay attention now i request uh, mr sir we are eager to hear you okay okay dr anurudh baba dear residents and faculty members of the tetso college timapur other friends from the northeast and also uh, our friends from this side of country i welcome you all to this program which has been arranged by tetso college and before that i extend my warm greetings to all of you i am happy to see that a lot of young faces students of the college are joining this program it shows that the question or the point which we are going to explore in this talk is not only interesting to the older generation but to younger generation also in fact in my experience with interaction with some of the children i feel that even some of the children are interested in this question because there is a reason that so as we explain the present level of evolution of human being where the logic where the intellect is being increased very rapid rate so a lot of questions do come in the mind of human being right from the age when he comes of the age and that's why today's children are very inquisitive very questioning and that is a very good sign we should not suppress that we should rather encourage that though their questions may be sometimes uncomfortable to us or elder generations so uh, uh dr baba has already uh, giving brief background of just society and philosophy but nevertheless since there are many young persons joining this and many of them are non members i will first briefly enumerate about theosophical society and theosophy then i will go to the topic theosophical society as dr baba said that it was founded in 1875 precisely in 17 uh, november in new york by helena petro brodsky who was a russian lady and colonel cot was an american and 14 15 people more uh the but they were outer founder the inner founder were two great sages living in himalayan tibet indian sages and uh, they had uh, inspired uh, madam blorsky and colonel cot uh at that time and purpose was to a spiritual and social transformation of humanity to bring a new line of thinking because they already felt that time that human beings are involved in too many differences and disputes and quarrels and uh, prejudices dogmatism superstitions religious belief so uh, purpose was to uh, bring on the right thing and man should be clear of all these things so that he can proceed on the path of evolution which is his destiny and meet his goal that is perfect man so uh, that was the purpose so that's why the goal first goal was that first object was to create a nucleus of universal brotherhood without any distinction of race or sex creed etc and uh, uh, nationality barrier also and second was to encourage 
comparative study of science, religion, and philosophy in an integrated manner. And third was to investigate hidden laws of nature and latent potential human being. Now, this potential world is very important, very keen, and we will see some of the points regarding this in today's talk. Uh, and the philosophy itself uh, basically consists of two words, Theos and Sophia. That means Theos means divine or God, Sophia means wisdom. So it is divine wisdom. So it is not a new, it is an ancient wisdom which has been known to sages and perfect persons and ancient people of, these, of all the civilizations in every country, be it India, China, Mexico, um, this uh, Maya civilization, and all those things have been known. But people do forget in, at, a, at a certain stage of evolution, and that's why uh, time and again, uh, uh, persons of higher uh, intelligence, higher spirituality come in the world to remind a common fair people like us, but there is such a wisdom, and we have to find that our path, and we have to go on that so that we can meet our uh, destiny proper way. Sir, so in, sir, may I request in that, to kindly switch off your video? Sir, may, can, can, can you can only switch the way you profit? Who? Me? Me? Yes, sir, because uh, there's a connectivity issue. Your voice is not clear, so kindly switch off video. And then continue. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So, right. Right. Um, in that, for that purpose only, the various prophets, incarnation, and high saints come, like say Krishna, Buddha, Jesus Christ, Muhammad. All they come to remind us that there is some wisdom which we have forgotten. And in that, uh, in for that purpose, a Tiwaspa society was formed only for that purpose uh, by the, the great. Uh, a brother of great uh, association of the sages, which uh, overlooks the evolution of humanity on this earth. So uh, this worldwide organization, Theosco Society, we have got uh, branches in more than 70 countries. Branches we call sections. In India, we have got, and then we have got federations in India, about 16 federations, various states. Assam, we have got federation. And uh, Dr. Babar is very one of the very active members there. Uh, so uh, this is a brief introduction of the Theosophy and Theosophy Society. And the Theosophy, uh, one more point, it comprises wisdom, which is already the essence of all the religions on this earth. Might be ancient religion, modern religion, and it also has been called as foundation of the future religion of humanity. So all the religions has evolved from it, a part of it, and finally, when they get perfected, they will follow this thing. So all the teachers, ancient teachers, world teachers, they mentioned, they come to tell us the part of the wisdom, depending upon the time and space where they come. They only modified their language so that the people of that time, of that age, and that place understand them. Uh, but it so happens many times the people do not understand, like it happened in the case of Jesus Christ, even Buddha. So they feel a position also of that time but after centuries, then people realize that what they have said that was correct, and then people appreciate. So uh, with this brief introduction, I will come to the talk now. Uh, the topics, uh, the points which I propose to cover, the man's identity as described by the society, by the family, uh, science, religious, scriptures, philosophies, and above all, by the him and herself. Uh, then pitfalls of self-description, self-identification, then importance of the question, who am I? And the process of answering it, that is by negation, by affirmation, there can be two processes, by negation, by affirmation, and then man's double nature, triple nature, secondary nature, I'll briefly cover. And then what is the role of man in the whole scheme of evolution, how he can contribute, how he can explore his uh, hidden uh, potential powers, and so that he can be, you know, benefit himself and also the fellow human being, not only fellow human being, fellow creatures, whole creation. So purpose is that man has to become human. Uh, there is difference between man and human, I will explain to you uh, later. And then humane human he has become, and then perfect man. This is the journey. So at present stage, most of the people at this stage are man. When I say man is women also, we do not uh, take it miss. Man, because it is a common uh, noun, man, 
when when anywhere man is used it is women also uh because it is state of evolution is state of consciousness we are not talking here gender difference sex difference so uh uh coming to the topic how is identified in the physical world when a child is born or even before born when it is conceived the family members and act and in fact after birth the first thing the doctor or nurse attending on the mother announces the waiting uh, uh, waiting relatives outside that a boy or girl is born the first identification comes of a man with a sex or gender boy or girl and uh, then the name according to is given according to tradition whatever country india uh, europe america the name is given by the family according to the gender then if the family believes in astrology they consult some priest and he some name according to zodiac zodiac in which is uh, uh, the child is born that becomes identity and then uh, when he grows up he goes to school the family name is added all that forms his identity uh, later on when uh, he or she joins some profession say engineer or doctor or advocate or professor or businessman his identity is in society becomes that he is he is certain such he is engineer known by engineer he is a doctor people they, uh, generally then forget the even uh, family name they, they identify doctor sir engineer sir professor sir and all those thing so that is that that become thing or uh, then he becomes political leader then he becomes uh, politician leader ministers and all those things. identification goes there uh, even if they retire from this people people identify him ex such and such retire such and such so that identity Uh, gets attached to him. That is society know. Then biology defines an aggregate of the various systems like muscular, nervous, veins, bones, organs, heart, stomach, and all those things with a thinking and uh, uh, think and feeling faculty. Uh, in social body, it is called social animal. Social animal. in darwin's evolution theory man has been evolved from animal so he 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 is at the top of the animal evolution is the highest form of evolution objective evolution so physical man is but a highest development of animal life that is also a identification uh then uh, it is also that is crown of the animal life on the earth. Yeah, it is believed that is true. Also, the evolution which is progress, progress, progressing. This comes from the various kingdom, like mineral, like plant, like uh, animal, human being. The monad or the unit of consciousness or the soul progresses through all these kingdoms and finally arrives at human. It is not only as we, but in objective world, finally it arrives physical world, and that's why it is called crown of the objective evolution. So these are the definition from the social angle, from the uh, worldly angle. Now, uh, then, uh, when you uh, think the man, you say that he's a he's a perfected animal, but uh, there is one difference: he cannot think himself. He has feeling. He can react to our ideas, thinking, but he cannot think himself or herself. So man, I have man has a thinking capacity. So man is called also think animal. So if somehow we can make our animal to think, our, our dog or pet cat to think, to be defined as man in this definition. But that is not so. There are so many other things. So these all these descriptions are incomplete. Now let us see what some of the scriptures say. The scriptures may be Bible, may be our Puranas, may be our uh, other uh, religion. There are uh, Avesta and all those, they define man as sometimes as a as a as a temple. How by says are the temple? What the temple God? That who the temple? What is God? That is the two things they are trying. Our physical body objective is being called temple or house. Something residing in that temple is you. So Bible just says. A or the temple of God, temple of God, but that is one definition. Uh, other descriptions come. You are the part of God. You are partial of. You are. You are. You are part of God. 
uninterrupted part of God. You are you are you are a spark of God. You are ray of God. All these definitions come, but such ray and spark is not separated. When you say spark of God, there is difference. The spark from the flame goes away; it is quenched. But this is spark of human soul is not quenched. It is always connection with the, uh, the flame, which is God. And that's why ray is probably a more appropriate definition in this terminology. Ray of the sun. So so many rays are there. And each ray is a human being, is a man. So that is all. These are you know symbolical definition because actual definition uh, will be much more elaborate. So our wise people try to define a simple way so that a common person can understand. Uh, so in one sense, it is called image of God. God made man in his own image. But when you say image, it means that God has our our uh, type of frame, what like our face, like our ear, like our eyes, our hands. It's not like that. There's some deeper meaning. But come to to be as God in our image, so they started making God as a resembling picture of man. Uh, then the higher philosophies, when we come, they describe a, uh, a divine being. A divine being, a unit of divinity, a unit of consciousness. Unit of consciousness, which comes defined. Consciousness is one, and out of that one unit is the human being. Sometimes it would drop in the ocean of consciousness. So the, all these are uh, uh, way of defining man, and we start from the physical level to the spiritual level, the philosophical level, and all that. Uh, and this question has been plaguing right from the ages. Uh, in an old Greek, there is a temple, temple of Delphi, where on the entrance gate itself is written, "Man, know thyself." And uh, uh, great sages have already put, uh, always put this question, and all philosophy, whether applied by Jesus, by Krishna, by Buddha, emphasize this point: man must know him. That is called swadhyaya, self-study. He must study what is he, what is nature. Now every individual. Though have got common biological, common chemical function at human level, they got same organs, same blood vessels, same vein, same nervous system, same brain. But the way of thinking, tendencies, habits of each man is different. Each man and women are different. There are so many men and women of of the type in the world, as many tendencies as habits. Somebody is saintly nature. Somebody is criminal nature. Somebody is uh, interested in earning money. Somebody interested in research. Somebody interested in some other art. Somebody interested in medicine. Somebody interested in agriculture. Somebody gets very angry. Somebody is very calm. Somebody is loving nature. Somebody is hateful nature. So many variations come. Somebody interested in technical profession. Somebody interested in philosophy. Somebody interested in politics. So so many natures and varieties come. So no human being is similar in this uh, final attribute, but at uh, at a physical level he appears to be similar. Even two brothers and two sisters, even twin sisters, and different in temperament, different capacity, ability. So all these will define his identification. So at the top level it is said the same is far. At the bottom level it is same face, same arms, same work. In between there is a lot of variation, factors, feeling, thinking, tendency. All these different. So how 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 to make and how to comprehend of this thing and what purpose for what purpose what to make use of that we see. So the what is the uh, real man? This is the question and this is the uh, problem of every generation. And everybody wants to know this thing. He belong. He may belong to any religion. He may belong. He or she may belong to any nation. A stage come when person wants to know. Even modern psychologists like Maslow, Maslow also say, a person when his, his basic needs are satisfied, say food, drink, and housing, and clothing, and uh, partly also sex, then uh, he, he, he inner desire is there that he should do, he should identify himself in society in what position, and he craves for that. Then we also satisfied partly. Then he wants to know after what is his connection with the subtle world. He reads about uh, angels. He reads about God. And he wonders what I am in relation to them. Then he, during night, when he uh, sleeps and night clear, he can see, he sees so many stars, so many galaxies. He wonders whether he is also some some way related to distant stars, distant galaxies. 
and uh, in that pursuit he may uh, uh, read astronomy he may read philosophy and his uh, wisdom his knowledge is increasing and his perception about his identity goes on change so uh, now when we come to question and how to tackle this question uh, before that some more uh, uh, descriptions i would like to put before you so uh, it is said man is that being in universe in which highest spirit and lowest matter meet in the mind and intelligence man's physical body as you say is made of material material sorry liquid you see and that's why after the body either cremated or buried and it disintegrates to this atmosphere so physical body is a material world then uh, everybody feels that there is a spirit and and these two are that kind of mind so highest spirit and lowest matter joined by mind is man uh the man is the stage in unfolding of the ray of divine as i told you earlier the ray of divine but in the process of evolution he unfolds his power now evolution also uh, later on we see how we consciously we can do in an unconscious way each child right from the birth he or she starts unfolding his power as he as he learns to walk learns to speak learns to language learns to read and explores the nature and uh, he wants to uh, he goes on acquiring knowledge acquiring special thing then he grown up he goes on subtler thing higher things like scientist like um, philosopher like medical profession all those things explores that so uh, th- that is key the divine goes on doing uh, that soul goes on exploring acquiring knowledge even in normal way conscious way even in the interaction i'm talking to you are talking to me in a family in a group we are trying to unfold our powers our power of speech our power of perception feeling and talking every moment we are unfolding our powers so uh, but there is sometimes a stage comes in evolution when spirit and matter a struggle the man is the stage where spirit and matter are struggling with each other they are each of is trying to dominate over each other the physical body has got different attraction that the matter my material part of the person has got different tendencies than the spiritual part has a different tendency for example material part wants to become uh, lazy then they want to get disturbed but uh, there is an emergency somebody is house in fire no any inner that is there that i should rest and uh, help the person to quench the fire that, that is pretty direct so there is always a struggle between the spirit and man or we come to higher nature lower nature so uh, these two nature uh, the spirit and matter try struggling in man that is also described and one is trying to dominate each other and finally they get properly balanced so man is a form of being in whom the self and non self are balanced non self is material mind and self self means in inner uh, self or spirit is balanced that is the only uh, real and philosophical we say occult definition of man not in a specific form not arrangement of head arms legs and so on man can be in in any shape in in uh, on the earth we have got this shape two hands two bodies two eyes two uh, one nose uh, one mouth uh, two ears all those things we don't know in other plants men may may may, may have body with different uh, different uh, limbs different shape but main definition comes the spirit and matter are trying to struggle trying to balance and is a thinking capacity this will be basic parameters which will define man on any planet and he may have any shape of body so uh and this and again uh anibesen who was the a leader of the first protest he says the man is the battle field of uh, spiritual matter because spiritual matter are trying to dominate and that's why in every problem even worldly problem man has got uh, minimum two choices whether i should go this way or that way whether i should do this profession or that profession i should do this thing or not do this minimum 
they have, they have, they may have multiple, uh, multiple choices, but basically two choices come. And then that is the, uh, the is contradiction in the two choices, what to choose. And here, as I told the example of being lazy and rushing for to have somebody, so matter and spirit tries to struggle. And that's why she says, the man is the Kurukshetra of the world, of the evolution. Kurukshetra is a famous uh, place um, uh, uh, mentioned where the Mahabharata war was fought. So, symbolic one, this is the Kurukshetra of the whole evolution. So, every uh, soul is striving in this battlefield and uh, whatever he is in man. So, uh, these are the, so the definitions from the higher point of view. Uh, the man, again, the, one of the basic parameters is a thinking entity. Again, man may be in any form on a different planet, but your thinking capacity will be defined and man. And besides that, uh, you have the uh, spirit and matter struggling. So this this comes to the crux and basic definition of man. Uh, and then, <clears throat> uh, how to, uh, as a common person, common man, women, when I uh, bought this desire to know myself, real nature, real man, uh, how to know about it, we come that. Uh, as I told that outer man or physical man, as is a material part of that, there is inner man, which is called real man, which is real immortal man, and we have to explore what is that. Now this is uh, again uh, uh, defined as a two uh, in a dual manner or triple manner. First, that first is defined body and soul or in triple way, spirit, soul, and body. The body is the, our physical body, which everybody sees. Then soul is something subtler than that. And the spirit is uh, a subtlest of that, which is just uh, brooding over it. So the purpose of evolution is to make our body function in tune with the nature of the spirit. And we'll see how to go about it. Uh, the dual nature of man, is also explained as higher nature and lower nature, which will also come again to be to you. Before that, uh, again, I'll give it back to the question how to explore the, our inner man. So as I told you, man has got different bodies, different purposes, and uh, I have mentioned to you two, uh, in a two division, three division. Then there is septenary division. Uh, I uh, mentioned in theoretical literature, man has seven principles, seven components in his physical body, which everybody sees, and one is what is called astral body, in which our feelings and emotions arise. That body is made of matter subtler than the physical matter, that is projecting about six inches from our physical body. And before that, there is a double, what is called the mold, in this made of ether, in which physical body is formed. And then after astral body, there is a mental body, thinking function uh, is done, there is a history, um, subtler matter. Then there is what is called buddhic body, where intuition is developed, where intuition functions. And then finally, there is atmic body, where the spirit uh, overshadowed everything. So these are the, these are the more detailed uh, type of description by defining the bodies. So uh, having considered these uh, construction of the body, let us see how to uh, judge ourselves. So there are two ways. One is contraction, one is expansion, one is negation, one is uh, acceptance also. So uh, first of all, uh, when we say uh, I am hungry, so what is hungry? Who is hungry? So we have to question who is hungry? Whether your mind is hungry, your feeling hungry, your soul is hungry, you have to find. So if you put this question, you will say that your stomach is hungry. That means your body is hungry, your body you now whatever energy it has is getting exhausted. It wants more fuel, more energy. So body is hungry. So my body is hungry. My body wants rest. My body wants to sleep. So we have to first say, yeah, I'm not my body. So this is negation. I'm not physical body. 
So uh, by this way, we have to identify I am not my physical body. I mean, what I'm real, I'm, I'm entering into my real identity. Then I get some feelings. I get some person angry with somebody. I get loving with somebody. I hate somebody. I like somebody. I do not like somebody. All these feelings. Are. Now, who is liking, who is disliking, who is hating, who is loving? It's a question. That means, again, we see that there is some entity which is hating, which is looking, but this body is not that. Body is only instrument working for that. Uh, sense organs are there. We are, we are having sense, sense, sense perceptions, experience. Say, uh, we are uh, listening to, we are uh, smelling something, we are uh, then speaking something, we did all these things. Our organs are not we, our mouth, our nose, all those things. We definitely try to find out all these things by this examination. Then thinking, who is thinking? We say mental body there, but who is the behind mental body? Again, we say that we are not mental body. So finally, we come to know what is our inner being, what is our ground, what we are. And finally, we come to uh, appreciate, if you have not read philosophy, that we are nothing. Finally, it is like an onion. If you go on feeding these uh, scales, finally, what you get? Ultimately, nothing. So finally, we get nothing. But nothing is a very crude definition. Of course, very apt definition also. Finally, we get since consciousness cannot be seen, cannot be uh, perceived, cannot be touched, cannot be smelled, cannot be like that, so it is nothing. But we have got to need for consciousness because we are doing all these functions. We are not nothing, but we are probably everything. So that was two definitions. So it is defined, we are a unit of consciousness. What is in Trascot term is defined monad, unit, unit of something. So unit of what? Unit of spirit and life. That is a consciousness. All the life is universal, is universal logan. Out of that, so many units are drawn out by the Supreme God, what we call God, Brahman, an absolute principle, during time of the uh, whole uh, evolution, and each unit came to aspect of the monad. One is a Greek term, monad means unit. And but while it is it is also so finally as to also all the qualities of ocean. Just like a drop of the ocean, it is the same water. It has all the qualities of the entire water of the ocean. Similarly, a monad or of the, of the ocean consciousness or Brahman or absolute principle, whatever we call it. So uh, this is the by negation we identify. Then there will be expansion. Now, at, at present stage, since we consider our body only as our entity, so we are separate from others. We, our feeling is different from the other members of family, other societies, we consider different. So there is separation here. So now if I try to embrace people whom I'm hating, I start loving, whom I'm disliking, I start liking, just but it is in power of human being. So we find that our our embracing circumferences expands again and again, and we find by reorienting our feeling from negative to positive, from loving and compassionate feeling towards our own, we find we feel that we are identified with all. That means not only uh, with family members, with our fellow creatures, with our society, fellow workers, with all the beings, all the things in the, in the world, all the creations you can see with the plants, with animals. So we feel that we are the ocean of consciousness, we are the ocean of life, we are one with that ocean, we are one with universal life. So uh, the, the two entities then, the two entities were in need of consciousness, but at the same time, we are one with the ocean of consciousness, ocean of life, which is only working around us. And this definition, this type of description, is already being proved by modern researches, which if time permits, I will uh, give you some example later. Uh, then again, we feel as we think and we uh, act in our life that we, though we appear to be separated, we are appear to be self-defendant, we are appear to be self-importance, but is it so? It is not so. We are always interdependent, interconnected. If you think even for a morning cup of tea, 
the tea if i take now if you think oh, it is a very small thing but if you think over oh, how many people are involved in making the tea there is a person working in tea garden in assam or darjeeling is planting the tree then some uh, lady is picking up the leaves then there is a plant there who is drying the drying the leaves then somebody is packaging sending to market somebody is transporting somebody is selling from which i purchase then i have to add sugar and milk that again the same process somebody is making it far away transporting packaging and selling so all the ingredients are then somebody is making the cup so all these ingredients enable us to have a cup of tea so how i am uh, how i am dependent on in number number person even for a ordinary cup of tea so for everything i am dependent of so many things and similarly others will be dependent on me so every whole thing in the universe is interconnected a uh, tea i only gave example you are a student now you are you are interacting with your books with your teachers with your fellow students with your friends with your family members and with everybody so we are always interconnected we cannot remove the interconnection we have to realize, realize that we are interdependent interconnection so that uh, and that becomes our order entity and here we try to embrace wider or wider circumference so uh, the definition of man changes that he is a circumference which is already expanding consciousness expanding so uh, the role of man uh, now i see how does it have an evolution as i told you earlier in the beginning the evolution proceeding from different stages when the animal from animal and human being and human being stage and above you there are stages of uh, angel kingdom what we call there was kingdom of sanskrit in english angelic kingdom and whom itself there are various vast variation if you look around you find there was difference in intelligence of man to man there is a person who uh, is very simple uh, he almost like a idiot he cannot understand anything on the other extreme the geniuses who can understand anything in fraction of a minute they can solve a very complex problem they are very, uh, great scientists philosophers and then straight art the person cannot sing music well the high 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 grade uh, musician is there so uh, cultured man there uncultured man the way what there so much difference is there and uh, a man soon slowly when he comes to man stage the more he evolves from the i uh, say uh, savage stage to the very high intelligence stage very evolved stage he takes so many paths and in this human journey the goal is set to become perfect man most many uh, all of us we are not perfect in mind so first we feel a separation that is a man and women stay then we feel that we are interconnected inter interdependent then we feel the necessity of uh, harmoniously united harmoniously united we become harmoniously united the world so h u then becomes human h u h u human means harmoniously united man man and women then they realize then they try to have harmony with everybody unite with everybody so then we become human most of people are human this is key and then we our uh, increase our circumference our uh, our our uh, radius of the compassion love caring for others then we became human 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 that means not only human being with other creatures animals plant when we look after them we do not destroy them unnecessarily we do not kill them we do not injure them even mineral even we do not waste water we do not waste anything we are very careful because wasting water is injuring water they are also life so when we become aware of this thing then we became humane human that is third stage so in present stage of evolution many majority of the man stage some of them human some and less number is humane human and a uh, very few no perfect man what is the perfect man definition that is our goal to reach in this whole evolution perfect man is a stage which is defined by various people perfect man is bible man be be as, as perfect as father bible says then uh, our hindu shastra says man has to be siddha uh, our islamic uh, scripture says he has been al insan al insan great insan so our hindu again is the is rishi sage is and all those things definitions are there so a perfect man is that who has uh, developed all his faculties perfectly 
physical body is perfect his feelings are perfect his thinking is perfect his viveka is perfect his uh, buddhi is perfect and he is embracing all this thing he is he is also helping others to become perfect uh not only is perfect in his own he is he is he has a perfection in the laws of nature laws of science laws of uh, uh, all the knowledge he has acquired and he can guide people in a proper way then he has got super uh, physical powers super physical powers over nature he can control nature for the benefit of men so that becomes a perfect man that comes a very uh, 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 very late stage but it is in capability of man to expedite this process and become perfect man quickly that is the goal of the human being uh, these are our great sages our great saints uh, which i call the two masters which founded chess society they have reached that stage uh, so uh, that is the goal set for the human being so this is the latent potential of man and it is said since man is the spark of the divine the spark of the god that in one attacking of this man the inner man not the outer man so he has got all the power of the god all the potential power of god just like i told you a drop of ocean has got same quality same power as a person so uh, he has got power the process one fulfillment is to uh, exhibit those power not in a showy manner but develop those power develop those power and unfold that is called unfolding of power that is the journey so in this process of evolution man is doing unconsciously as i told you our every action every thought every interaction is evolving us sometimes it retards when we uh, properly uh, do not uh, do our work properly so uh, but we have got power by and power of thinking power of contemplation by this we can expedite that process that is in man hand that's why he said man is self made man is no self creation man is what he has made himself what she has made himself no god god is there but god at the stage of at stage of man he leaves himself independent now you have got thinking power you have got uh, viveka you have got uh, uh, intelligence now you apply that and learn you, you come from mistake you learn from that and you advance yourself so man is stage very critical stage evolution man is a very critical stage of evolution and but very important this evolution man is the only stage where it has got freedom to commit error freedom to commit mistake freedom to commit sin that freedom has been given this freedom has been given only to learn the mistake from the mistakes and to proceed further it doesn't mean that we should deliberately commit sin deliberately commit mistake at least that at least on the if we commit mistake and sin then we learn lesson and proceed further animals they don't have this freedom for example if food is there animal will take only that food food will satisfy his hunger he will not take over it man in his in his uh, greedy nature he will, if a dish is very delicious he will over eat and he, by that he will spoil his stomach digestion and then he has to go to some doctor and take medicine so by this process he will learn that he has to control his eating man by being lazy he will become fat he will become lazy and he will know that this is not good then he will do some exercise he controls his diet then by his negative feeling he will make others unhappy by negative thinking he will make uh, environment all around is very unhappy very and he will learn from that then he will try to change it. this capacity is in man self training he has to evolve and all these teachings uh, whether religious philosophical or worldly teachings are only for this purpose that we should know our potential we should change ourselves in a proper and that way we help ourselves in evolution and by this process we help so finally when we acquire some knowledge in that in this process then we become forced in the evolution at present unconsciously we are being led by a bigger force evolutionary force but when we know all these things then we become a force and we contribute to this evolutionary force and uh, that becomes our contribution not only for helping in vividly us but whole a uh, creation so finally we uh, when we know that the plan of evolution so it is said there are two types of men one who know one who do not know no one knows what one who know there is a plan of evolution that everybody has to evolve everybody has to go up in the consciousness unfolding in power unfolding this is the plan this is the divine plan this is god's plan and i told in the beginning only for making this plan one make us understand all the prophets all the incarnations they come to us to remind us 
that you have forgotten there is a plan. Please, please see there is a plan. When Christ comes or Krishna comes or Buddha comes, they turn only to this thing, remind us there is a plan. Please look at plan and work accordingly. So, uh, but it's still, uh, they forget. So they have, uh, at present, we are two types of people who know and who do not know. Who know they work according to plan or in religious words, we say they work according to God's plan and they help themselves and help the humanity. Who do not know, they are ignorant and they work against the plan, not sometimes not deliberately, sometimes ignorantly, and they create obstruction, they go to illusion. But they, they are not lost for the very thing. They learn lessons and probably in the next incarnation, they learn more. So for learning this, for evolution this, the process has been given by two things, the incarnation and karma. The law of karma is very uh, inviolable law, eternal law. Whatever man does, does means not only physically, but feeling and, 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 and also thinking. The effect comes on him. He also expressed the effect all around on him, not only fellow human being, other creatures, other creation. And then somebody has joined now. <clears throat> that means uh, whatever he does, it affects other. He has to realize that. And then he starts controlling his action at physical level, feeling level, and thinking level. Uh, the person who don't, who don't know, he doesn't bother. He's hurting anybody. He's doing anything. So he doesn't bother. But by that mistake, he learns something. And he also, acts at, at later stage, comes up. And this whole lesson is when it is learned, then person becomes perfect. When he, had, uh, he doesn't have anything left to learn on this earth, then he becomes perfect human being on this earth. What we are talking about, Siddhas, a perfect man, as mentioned in the Bible, or al insan as mentioned in the Quran, then becomes. So uh, when, he, when, he, when he becomes this, uh, at least know, he knows, then what happens? Then he starts diff, uh, the removing the difference in the mind of the sex, of the, of the race, of the caste. He treats everybody equally. Uh, uh, at present, uh, women are, are treated differently. Persons of different regions are taken differently. Color of his skin it makes a difference. All the differences should go from that person who is had taken evolution in his own hand, in old, uh, in, uh, in one's own hand. So all the differences go. Then the question, then the knowledge comes. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I'm Hindu, whether I'm Christian, whether I'm Muslim, whether I'm Indian, whether I'm Chinese, whether I'm, whether I'm from Nagaland or from UP or from Bihar. I am same human being on this journey and the evolution starts. The knowledge must come and then this uh, at least must come intellectually first. Then you should try to grasp and you should proceed that. The nature takes care of that. In every incarnation, in every incarnation, he will go up in consciousness, in, in feelings, in capacities and all this thing. And he will journey to become perfect human being will be accelerated uh, the, with this knowledge and this applying this knowledge to our life. So man in this way is his own master. That's why three great truths have been declared. One is there is a there is a principle, benevolent principle, which is outside, inside us, everywhere, which is always beneficent, but this cannot be touched, this cannot be heard, this cannot be tasted, uh, but this can be perceived, if you can perceive. That means when I'm reaching, when I'm trying to perfect myself, I'm per perceiving there is some subtle energy which is impelling me from inside. That is the benevolent principle. It is working in everybody. Everybody only have to perceive that. Then second is the, the human soul. Human soul. Each of the each of us, we have got human soul. There is no limit to its growth, no limit to perfection. Uh, the height, glory it can achieve, there is no limit. You become the human soul by this perfection can become a day I told you, man to human, human to human, human, then perfect man then became highest gods, then became at God level, he can reach there. Ocean of consciousness, he can reach there. And third great truth is, man is his own master. Man is his own destiny. He is destiny maker. No outsider force, no outside God, no outside power makes his destiny. Whatever he does, he gets, he reaps that. And according to that, he learns lesson and he proceeds. So this we must do. And having this knowledge of law of karma, that I'm no more my master, I'm, own, I'm, I'm, I'm creator of my own glory or doom. I take myself in my hand and I change my thinking, my feeling, my working, and then I help in the evolution process. 
So this knowledge, who am I, helps us to understand what we are really, what are powers, latent powers, and how to utilize that power, not only for our own development, for our own meeting our goal, but for helping whole creation. So man is that stage, that is spiritual being. At this stage, when the knowledge comes, then he becomes a he, he, he utilizes his mind. Mind is a wonderful worker given to us. Now, at present stage, our mind wanders in so many things. Past, present, this, past, that thing, very th uh, tricky things and very superficial things. When I come to know that I have got his mental power, which is a, a wonderful worker, then I try to control my mind. I consciously apply my mind to certain thoughts, to certain ideas, which I want to learn, I want to develop. I control mind, I control, I control mind, I stop that mind to wander from this and that thing, and then that becomes a big force, big channel for. Similarly, when I do certain work, even small work in daytime, in our daily life, we pay full attention. What I'm saying, doing the work with heart. At present, my attention is scattered. So that's why the work is not done perfect, not done to satisfaction. I have to repeat mistakes. So when this knowledge comes, I pay proper attention. And then I became self-collected, wholesome, fully consciousness, acting with intent. Then we are in a right journey. For this, there are three processes. We have to study all this literature, contemplate that, or learn from somebody who has studied more, and meditate on this idea uh, regularly for some time. And most important of all this thing, after that, do self-service. We go on telling the people these principles, the life of principles, and try to help. Even if you know partially, it is better to tell others whatever you know that your service, self selfless service. So uh, this becomes a path and learning, contemplating, meditating, and doing service. This becomes a path. And by this path, we have to advance in evolutionary journeys. And then we reach our goal, great goal, goal, and to human, to human, human, to protect man. Thank you very much. Any questions, clarification? Dr. Babar? Your enlightening talk. Uh, 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 you know, the food. Okay, for yes, the I just want uh, one slide I forgot in this talk. Yeah. Okay, in this talk, I just wanted to put one picture. Let me see that. I just forgot. Yeah, please, sir. Please, sir. You okay. still have time. Yes, I, I just put that. Okay, You're right. Uh, okay. Okay, please see this picture. As I told you, man has dual nature. The upper triangle, which color is shown or uh, nature. Sir, and the picture is not yet visible. No. Picture is not yet visible. It's not visible. Uh, but my, no, sir. My spirit is coming. Uh, maybe uh, to you, may, you, you may switch on your video. My video. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay, I should Come in. Hello. Hello. No, sir. No, sir. It's not visible. Are you are My is on, audio is on. So some connectivity problem. Anyway, I do basically showing two triangles. The triangle of higher nature, the soul, and the bottom triangle of low nature. Okay, uh, as I said in principles of physical body, emotions and our low thinking. Then uh, the higher triangle is our higher nature, which we say our buddhi, vivika, and higher mental thing. So these two things, our lower nature has brought in alignment with our higher nature. And then uh, we talk our balance function, and the matter uh, tries to balance each other and become a good human being. Let's try again this Uh, 
this is all the presenting i don't know is not my picture still no it's it's not clear it's nothing is coming actually maybe because of internet not, problem not not visible not visible sir not visible okay okay so there's some problem there's some problem so maybe you can try once again okay let me try Sir, it is perfectly all right. I guess there is some connectivity issue. Is it coming now? Not yet. Not yet. No, sir. I think this is connectivity issue. There is some problem. So let us talk about it. So our hand nature is our inner will. The will power. We have got will power, and that is our inner faculty. Very powerful will power. And we can utilize this for doing a good work. For doing our desired work, the motivation. Then we got uh, values. Our uh, values. This comes in the hand nature. It's like this, like uh, loving care, like impartiality. All these are our values. Then uh, uh, we have to think. We have to think uh, the broader way. Uh, our visions. We have broader vision. Universal thinking. We should not be confined to our uh, our own. Uh, society, our ideas, way of thinking. We should have voices. That comes from your voices. I have vision. Sir, your voice is unstable. Then, yeah. pardon? Unstable. Again, connectivity issue. Yes. What? What? Again, connectivity issue. So, yeah, I think uh, okay. I have covered many, now many. Now it's okay, sir. No. Now it's clear. Now it's clear. Yes. Picture is coming. Yeah. No, no, no. Picture is your coming. voice is clear. Okay. So, uh, picture I could not show you because of this problem. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, sir. Then shall we uh, shall we go for question and answer session? Yes. Okay. So now uh, the stage is open for a question and answer session. Andi sir, if there is any question, please Hello. go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Please. Bolie. Ah, uh, uh, who who wants to speak? I hope my mic is clear. I want to uh, ask the students. Hello. Yes, sir. Your voice is clear now. I still, there is no. Still, Pandey sir, my my question is. My... Yes. Uh, yes. sir, my question is there now. What is the deeper meaning of freedom, yes. sir, in man, sir? Please clarify this freedom, uh, matter. What is the deeper meaning of freedom? Freedom. Freedom in man. Freedom. This okay. is the democratic question now. Freedom. Yeah. Please clarify, freedom sir. Please, is, uh, freedom, uh, meaning of freedom in man is freedom from man, freedom from the culture. That is the freedom. Freedom not freedom is not uh, of uh, of the spirit. Freedom from the lower nature, from the from material part of the world, from the our coarse uh, uh, tendency, negative tendency, negative feeling. That is the freedom. When we go free of that, uh, uh, we come to the uh, real nature, or true nature, or the thinking, positive, all that. So freedom is always from the lower nature. And as we proceed in motion, the uh, it will get higher from the uh, lower, and still more higher nature comes. So this process of freedom comes uh, possibly in later times. In our present, it can be initiated uh, to be free from our laziness. Uh, 
type of thing. If I'm a ritual, become angry, I will be great to that and bring that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hey, I'd like to know one or two young participants. Okay, uh, I think uh, our speaker is not able to connect. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, then, oh yes. Brother Aniruddha, brother Aniruddha. Yes, sir. Uh, US Pontesar has left already. US no, no, Pontesar has already left. No, no, I have not left. I am here. <laughs> sir, sir. It was disconnected. It was disconnected momentarily. It was disconnected momentarily. But you are uh, okay, sir. Thank you. I was asking any any of, from the young participants whether they could uh, listen, understand. Any one of them, one or two persons, can react. What about Lily Chisi Su? Did you hear? Before speaking, you have to unmute yourself. Otherwise, I am not listening to your voice. Uh, sir, I would like to ask a question. Um, can you hear me, sir? Uh, can, can you, uh, please, uh, your, your name is Avi or D? What is that? Yes, sir. My name is Avi V. Uh, thank you so much, sir, okay. for the insightful discussion. Uh, there is a simple question that I would like to ask you. How would the philosoph theosophical philosophy explain for a person who suffers, for instance, like schizophrenia or, dis uh, or bipolar disorder or any other mental related problems when it comes to self-made? Okay. The mental problem is a logical problem. And all of the philosophy so it covers many things, it covers psychology also. Uh, in mental, uh, as I told you, we have a mental body, which is our, just like our free body. And we have mental things on this thinking that we have to the mental body. But think of it, think of it, so I think of it, so I think Generally, the mental body of a person, addiction, addiction, or you can say, what I say is it doesn't change. I cannot be wise first. But when it just evolves, the other stage, the last two stages, then it can start to go back. That's why I have it. have got the negative tendency of depression, of the trauma, of the disappointment. So when he goes up, either by number and condition, or even his own teaching, understand the deeper meaning of his scriptures, then he comes to realize he or she should like that with his own mind. 
So mind has no Not audible, sir. Your speech is not audible, sir. I really apologize for this network connectivity, but uh, these are few things which we cannot control. Okay, so sir, if you are able to hear me, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time, for your presentation. Today's topic has been very complicated. And it is very difficult to, you know, the grasp the gist of the topic, uh, you know, in 30, 40 minutes of the discussion. So uh, on behalf of Tetsuo College, on behalf of uh, Dot Talks webinar series, I'm really thankful to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank okay. you so much. And I, okay. I'm really thankful to all of those who have joined. Uh, okay, uh, since the question and answer could not be complete because of connectivity problem, if the participants sir. have got any questions, uh, I will request them to send to me directly or to Mr. Baba, and I will do, uh, try to explain either through WhatsApp or through messages. Sure, thank sir. you very much. Better, I would really love to extend this, uh, you know, a conversation. I think that is very important because the topic is very important. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.